Hey guys, I've had some time to mess around with the uh, iOS uh, iOS 5 beta. So here we have a 4th gen iPod Touch. So I want to go over a few of the features here. We're going to do an iPad one at the end, but first we'll start with the iPod Touch. Okay. So first off, when you uh, double click the home button, you only get your iPod controls on the top and your AirPlay. Now you actually have a quick launch button. This is the same for the iPhone. And you can just tap on it. Your camera will launch. So it's really quick to get your camera. It's a little bit quicker on the iPhone, I've noticed. Either way, it gets you right to your camera right away. If you have a passcode in and you tap the photo button, you can't get to your photos. So even if you have to slide to unlock and put a cat passcode in, you're protected. Next up, we have iMessage. This is a new app on the iPod Touch, but on the iPhone, this will be the uh, standard app. So you'll actually log in, which we can't do because no one has it yet. So not a lot to see. So we have newsstand. There's not much going on with Newsstand yet. All your newspapers will go here. There'll be a store there. They'll be updated daily with uh, covers of the app, newspapers or magazines. But again, not live till iOS drops in the fall. So here we have a new notification system. You have your stocks and your weather, which are kind of essentially widgets, and your other notifications will appear in there. Okay, so here we have one pop up on our lock screen, which these will move, but you do have your notification. You can actually slide across that notification, whatever it is, to get straight to it. So here you can see we were taken straight to the calendar. And now you can pull down from the top within any app, and you can now see there's calendar, and I the event was iOS notification. You can hit the X, and it's clear, and you can delete all of them, whether there's multiple or not. If you go into the settings for this, actually, if we go to notifications here, you can actually see if we go to like calendar, you actually see it has badges and banners, and you can show like five recent items or more, and you can actually change it to none or alerts. So you have a lot of customization options within new notifications. So those are pretty nice. And again, each one has their own settings that you can change. We launched the iPod app here. You can see we can just go ahead and straight pull that down and get access to it from anywhere. You just throw it back up. So no matter where you're at and whatever you are, it'll literally just pull it down, get your notifications, see them, put them back up, or you can just tap them to launch the application itself. So, really great new revamp on those. Now the camera here, we'll go into the camera app. Of course, I don't see it a little better. You know, there are grid lines you can turn on, um, so you can do rule of thirds and stuff like that, and make sure you level all those. But if you look here at the volume buttons, if we actually hit the volume up button, you can actually use that to take a photo. Uh, it looks like I have it on video here, but normally you can uh, obviously you can start a photo, start a video, or end a video, or take a photo. So that's a nice little added thing. A lot of people wanted a hard button for that, including the Camera Plus app that was like removed from the App Store for doing that exact same thing. So let's go through the settings. And these are slightly different. You'll see a couple new things in here. There's actually a new iCloud one where you can log in with your Apple ID or your new Me email address. You'll actually see, not in here, um, I think they're in general maybe, yes, there's software update and iTunes syncs, because this will sync automatically when you have it plugged in through USB into any any outlet essentially. You just sync, it'll find your computer whenever it's available, sync over Wi-Fi, so you don't have to plug it in. Also, you have software update, you can just tap that, and it'll download the new Delta software update, I mean, just what's changed, not the entire OS, so it's a lot smaller. But those are the normal things. You can see here this is running version 5.0. Should have pointed out at the beginning, but if you were wondering where all these new features, it is running that. Anyway, so here's the new reminders app. Now you can actually, if you can see this, yep, there a little bit at the bottom. We have little dots so you can swipe between different lists. So you groceries list, to do, task, and a completed. Completed is always there. So groceries, we put some stuff we need. I need to get, I need to pick up some salmon. Let's see, I need some lemons for the chi for the fish. And you know what? Let's get some time on there. That sounds Sounds pretty good. I got most of the other stuff. So we have a basic stuff here for my recipe. Okay. So now what we can do is we and we get rid of the keyboard here. We can actually check mark the ones we get, and they will be you know marked as completed here. Tells you how many you have left and such. And you can also swipe to the left here. There we go. And it'll show you it on a completed list. So the completed list will kind of compile all of them together. And now if we go into the settings for time, you know we're gonna I want it to notify me when I get to a certain location. So it'll set up a geofence around, so like when I leave, so I'll do, um, you can do current location or you can choose an address, so you can choose the grocery store. When you get to the grocery store, have it do that. But essentially, you can choose your current location or an ad address when you arrive or leave, it'll notify you. 
So like when I get to the grocery store, get time. So here we have an iPad 2. This will work on the iPad 1, but I'm obviously using an iPad 2 here with, you know, thinner, fancier. If you haven't seen it, you know, it's great. You can check out my review on that. But that's the iPad 2. Anyway, so one thing you notice first, there is no double click for camera button, okay? So if I we'll turn it horizontal so you can see a little better, we'll double click, and you always have your photo um, picture frame down there. And if you double tap, you bring up your AirPlay and your iPod controls, your volume, but you don't get a camera button. So apparently, no one is really in a rush to take a photo with their iPad, which I agree with. So again, we have news down here, which looks a lot nicer on a bigger screen, which is obviously we're going to be reading your magazines like Wired and the Daily and all those things. Store is still not live. Can't really do anything yet. You can't add anything to it either, so if you try to drag an app in, it won't work yet. So you can see messages look a little bit better here on the iPad. You can compose new. It'll automatically know if it's someone who is registered with iOS. So you can just pull some off from your contacts, or you can, you can start typing names in, or you can just hit the plus button and you know pull straight from your list. Now, even though these are separate apps on the iPad and iPod Touch, it is built into the same message app on the other one, or on the iPhone, sorry. Anyway, so here's um, tasks or the uh, reminders on the iPad, which again looks a lot better. It has the dual screen view, so you can view uh, my brightness of it down here. But you can see on the left hand side will be all of your menus, or not menus, sorry, your different lists that you have, like to do, tasks, groceries, phone calls, anything like that that you need to do. So we're going to add a new one here called demo, which you can hardly see at all. That is not showing up on the video. Nope. Can't see that here. Let's just go ahead, brighten that up. Get a second to adjust here, but now you can see them. Okay, so there we have demo, and they sort by different. You know, on your iPad, there's my, um, you know, OS email account. So you have they can group by email account to sync over iCloud. Anyway, so we'll add those two there. Hit done. We'll save those. So here are our two events. You know, so we'll go to demo. We'll add a new reminder here. So I need to call my dad. Okay, so just add dad in here. And again, this is very similar to the other one, but now we have nice pop-up windows because we're on an iPad. So again, web by location, and when I arrive at my home address, so we can just go through everyone, you know, type in my name here, so Andrew. As soon as I get to my home address, it'll know to remind me to call my dad. As soon as I get home, I'll have a nice pop-up one here, and then it'll sync right away. So it's pop-up on my iPhone, my iPod Touch, anything like that, so I know what to do. And this will all sync over iCloud. Again, it's a little buggy, so that's not saving. So we can just leave. But again, this is a beta, um, the developer preview, the first one, two, so it, it's not really doing any. It's There has been very small issues, but apparently this is a human issue. So either way, we can just save it, and we're good. Now, again, you can hit the check mark. It'll be completed, and you go up to your complete list, and there, call that. It's right at the top of the list. And you can uncheck them, and it'll pop back down into your stuff, too. So if you do need... If you forgot to get you actually mark it, easy to go out. Anyway, so if you didn't miss that, there was a gesture, which was pinch in. You can also push up and brings up your notification, your not notification, but your bar along the bottom here, your fast app switcher and your controls. So you can tap it to bring it down, or you can push up and pull down to get it back. Now if we go into an application, just something random here, we'll um, open up pages, okay? So pages, you know, we have all I work on my iPad here. So <clears throat> Once this is loaded here, you can actually take swipe fingers and swipe. Oh, that way there's nothing because it's the new app, newest app open. But you swipe back and you jump right back to your remainder, reminders app. And again, you can swipe back to pages very quick. And again, swipe you know back again. You can swipe between you know, essentially all the apps. And with fast app switching, they're already loaded. So you can switch between you know internet and pages. Like when you're working on a document, researching stuff, works great. Speaking of Safari. We have some new stuff in Safari, not anything huge, but tabs. Um, before we get to tabs, I want to show you this thing on the keyboard. If you hold that down, you can see a couple new options. Okay. Now, if you don't want to hold it down, you can actually just drag up. Oops, sorry there. Drag up, and then it will not split. So if your thumb tape, if you can't set your iPad down, you have to kind of peck at it with your thumbs. Well, now, you have this nice adjustable keyboard, and you can just type on it. So if I want to go to a website, tap in the upper bar, and now I can just type between both thumbs. So, you know, go to end gadget. Okay, I'm not that fluent in edit behind the camera, but I can just type go to endgadget.com, go, it'll take you there. So that's pretty cool. 
and there you can see all the tabs at the top okay and you can just like on the internet or any regular safari you can just slide them around put them over one thing very quickly but it is kind of easy to you know accidentally the bar is so small you, you sometimes might actually click like exit out of a tab or switch into another tab when you don't mean to so another new feature is a reading list so here you know we have my reading list I want to save for you know offline reading so here oh look the Apple iOS 5 hands-on from NGET. So you can just tap it and it'll immediately load it. It's essentially a uh, bookmark. But for, you know, articles and such like that, you just hit the plus button, they'll jump right in. You also will have a reader button up here, just like on uh, Safari 5 for the computer, which will allow you to read stuff in a fancy little, like, thing without all the pages and ads and everything like that. So we've got a camera here. Here we have the new grid lines that you could see on, you couldn't see on my iPod. Again, you can just tap options and there's the on and off for it. Really simple, really nice, allows you um, really make sure your stuff's lined up good. So again, you have, don't have any other new controls down there, nothing too new in the camera with the iPad, but you do have the new buttons. So if I go up here to the volume rocker on the iPad, right there, you can actually click on the button just like on the iPhone and iPod Touch and just take a photo. So you do have hard buttons if you're really going to take some nice photos with your iPad. Anyway, so we can go back out of there. And here's the new music player. Not my favorite thing. I honestly, I honestly hate it. It does not work well for me so far, but it could be buggy. Around the sides, you have some very slight shows of wood, I guess, but that's it. Um, if you look at specific music here, they some songs are grayed out. You can like tap them, but they don't, they don't do anything. And I don't know why they should be synced. They, I have them set to be syncing, but they don't work. And if we turn up, the, it says we have volume up there. But if I find the song to play, say Adam's song by Blink-182, we find Adam's song and I hit play. Oh, it's playing. Oh, but now it says the volume's off. So we have the volume off up there. We turn it up. But again, no sound is coming out. So there's something wrong here, but this is a beta. This is all going to be fixed, I'm sure. But this gives you kind of like rough idea of what it looks like. I still don't understand why some songs are gray. I'm not sure if they didn't get transferred over. It realized they have them, but doesn't have them on the iPad. Not quite sure. But we'll hope that gets fixed. So also we have mirroring on the iPad too, which is kind of cool. So if we switch, we hit the AirPlay button, we switch to Andrew's iPad, or we switch from Andrew's iPad to Andrew's Apple TV. Turn mirroring on, Apple TV immediately jumps to here. And that's my iPad up on the big screen. I know it looks just like my iPad, but that's actually my TV. But the iPhone, is, the camera is correcting the balance. Again, you can see some small glitches in it. But... It works really well. It's pretty. It's there's a slight lag to it, not a ton, but you can even. This is kind of cool. You can open up your camera and live stream your camera to your TV. So here I'm recording on my iPad. You can actually. There's the TV that it's displaying on. Here's actually the camera recording the TV, which is playing the camera. They're all kind of like glared, but it's really cool. So you can kind of like record stuff and have it displaying up on your TV, so you can kind of get some cool views and stuff like that. Anyway, if you want to see what the, there's a notification, by the way, on the top, that's the notification bar. I don't have anything in there right now. There are no stocks in weather on the iPad, so there's nothing in there unless you get, you know, an actual notification. Anyway, so here's my iPad. If you want to see the lag, it's very slight when you, but it is there, so it's not going to be good for, like, playing games. If you want to do that, you're going to want to tether it using HDMI. Um, if we launch an app, you can see it's just ever so slightly behind up on the TV. Again, with iBooks. But it's really cool. I mean, these aren't going to be the apps you're going to want to use on there, but it will be great for showing photos and the like. It'll be really good. You can see, zooming in, everything is on your iPad will be up on your screen. So that's pretty cool. You don't see stuff when you're using gestures. You see, just see, like, the results of what you're touching. If you would go into something specific, like here, we'll turn to landscape or portrait, which also works, by the way. But again, you're going to have big black bars on the side of your TV because it's only so small. But if we open up something like this where you can actually see where you're touching, if I hit, you know, all clear there, bottom left-hand corner of the red button, slightly touch, and if you hold it down, you can kind of see where I'm pressing. But other than that, they won't be able to see what you're touching at all, so it could have some cool implications. Anyway, so now we just go back into the notification bar. You can change the brightness on your iPad, but it will not affect the TV at all. And if you also change the volume right now, volume doesn't seem to work. I can't get anything to play through there, but it could have some bugs kind of related to the music player. But I could not get anything audio to play through the there. And when you just turn it off, Apple TV goes straight back down. So I know I tried to cover a lot here. This is already a 15-minute video. There's so much I missed. But you can check out Apple's website for all the stuff. But iOS 5 comes out in the fall. It'll be a free update to um, most products. Thanks, guys.